In this video, I'm going to walk you through the specimen paper for NatVi Practical Network. A G-Camp is used for a uh, camping material securely to a surface. The drawing below shows how a G-Camp is to be made. So we've got a picture of the G-Camp showing the screw thread and the internal thread. Name the tool used to cut the internal thread in the frame. Well, that would be a tap. Complete the procedure for cutting the internal thread in the frame. Drill a pilot hole in the frame. In the frame. Um, add lubricant to the tap. Put the tap in the tap wrench. Turn clockwise to begin cutting the thread. Turn anti-clockwise to release the swarf. Repeat steps 4 and 5 until the thread is fully cut. The tool shown below was used to cut the screw thread. Name this tool. Well, that's a die and a die stock. Explain why the external thread on the screw must be cut after the internal thread in the frame is cut. So if you cut the internal thread and then cut the external thread and you, you, you try to screw it in, if it's too tight, what you can do is you can um, use the die, make adjustments to the die to cut more material um, so that uh, with the, the die so that it fits properly. Centre lathe shown below was used in the manufacture of parts of the G-Cramp, main parts A and B, th the three-jaw chuck and the tailstock. Identify the correct height by ticking the box below. Well, it's the one that's aligned up to the middle. Describe what could happen if the cutting tool was not set at the correct height. Well, one thing would be it wouldn't um, it wouldn't turn the metal um, as efficiently. Another answer would be the fact that if you were facing off, you would end up with the little sort of um, raised part in the middle of the the, the um, rod because it's not been lined up to the centre. Stop and tommy bar of the jig ramp are shown below. The machine process is used from the end of the stop and tommy bar are shown at X and Y. Name the machining process carried out at X and Y. Well, X uh, would be taper turning and Y would be parallel turning. The machine below was used to drill a blind hole in the movable jaw of the G-Camp. Name the machine. It's either a pedestal uh, drill or a pillar drill. Explain what is meant by the term blind hole. Well, this is a hole that doesn't go all the way through the material. Describe two circumstances when it would be appropriate to reduce the speed of the machine. If you're using a bigger drill uh, and you need more torque, then you want to slow the speed of the machine. If you are drilling a smaller hole, then you would increase the speed of the, the machine. With a smaller uh, drill bit, that is, you would increase the speed of the machine. Describe how the machine would be set to ensure that the hole is drilled to the correct depth, or you would use a depth stock. Um, describe three safety checks that should be carried out in the machine before switching it on. Well, you want to check that the drill is securely attached to the chuck, that the guard is in position, that you know where the emergency buttons are. State one property of high carbon steel. Well, high carbon steel is very hard. A door latch for changing cubicle at the local sports centre is shown in the diagram below. The front plate requires a slot to be cut. This, the marking out of the slot is shown in the diagram below. Line A has to be parallel to the bottom edge of the front plate. Um, name the marking tool which would be used to ensure to use to mark line A. Well, you would, they would accept a, an engineer square or um, possibly odd light calipers. Waste material is produced as a result of cutting the slot. The waste material is placed in an appropriate recycling bin. Explain why it's important to recycle metal. Give two reasons. Uh, well, metal is not a sustainable material, so you want to conserve it as much as possible by recycling it. Um, what else? Explain why it's important to recycle metal. Um, it's good for the environment if you recycle it. Aluminium and mild steel are two metals that can be recycled. State the property of mild steel that would allow it to be separated from alum aluminium during the recycling process. Well, if it's um, a steel, it contains iron, so it'll be magnetic. The diagram below shows an exploded view of part of the door latch. You've got the back plate, the spacers, the front plate and the rivets. Four rivets are to be drilled in the front and black back plates. The front plate was marked out and drilled before beginning, for, before being used as a template for the back plate. Describe two advantages of using a template rather than marking out individual holes. Well, it would ensure that the, lines, um, that the holes on the front and back plate line up. And what else? Describe two advantages of using a template rather. Um, it would ensure that um, repetition, accuracy of repetition when you're, if you're making uh, more than one. The type of rivet used to join the plates and spacers is shown below. Name this type of rivet. That's a round-headed rivet. The sequence of operations for riveting is shown below in the correct order. However, the diagrams that accompany the sequence of operations are shown in the incorrect order. Write the correct number of the sequence of operations in the box next to the diagram. Right, you would begin by you've obviously got form the rivet head with a with ball pane hammer. 
wait a minute here, right, the correct number of the sequence of operations in the box. So the first one here is um, number four form the rivet head with ball, pain, hammer. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't know that. In this question, it says the sequence of operations for riveting is shown below in the correct order. However, the diagram accompanying the sequence of operations are shown in the incorrect order. Write the correct number of the sequence of operations in the box next to the diagram. The first one is done for you. So we can see that for cutting the rivet to the correct length, that this is the, the, the diagram for that is the second one from the bottom, where it, it actually gives you one as the correct operation. The next one, bring pieces of metal together with the rivet set. Well, that would be the very bottom diagram. Swell the rivet with the flat face of the hammer. That's going to be the second one from the top, down from the top. You can see the flat head of the hammer. And what that's going to do is just going to, um, you know, upset the end of the, the, the shaft of the rivet to make it wider. Form the rivet head with a ball pane hammer. And that's going to be the very top diagram. You can see the, the round head of the ball pane hammer hitting at an angle to create, begin to create the round head and then finish forming the head with the snap. So that's the third one down where we use both a snap underneath and a snap on top to finally form a nice round shaped head to the rivet. Explain one advantage of countersinking the rivet instead of forming a dome. Well there might be, it might be this case that you're maybe wanting it to be flat on one side so um, instead of using a rivet that's got a round head on both sides you could countersink the other side of the hole and um, rivet it so that it's flat on that side. The tool shown below was used during the manufacture of the door latch. Name this tool. Well this is a digital micrometer. Two readings from the tool are shown below. State the correct readings shown above. If we look at this one here, reading A, you can see that it's um, on the left hand side scale. It's somewhere between 5 and 0.5 and 5.5. And then the vertical scale here, if we look at that, um, it lines up to the left hand scale at 20, so that's 20 hundreds. So 5 millimetres plus 20 hundreds is 5.2 millimetres. If we look at this one, um, if we look at the left hand side, we can see that it's above 2.5 millimetres. And this time, um, in terms of hundreds, we've got 35, 36, 37, 38. And we add that to the 50, because it's beyond 2.5, so that's 88. So we end up with 2.88 millimetres. The slide on the door latch is shown below. Name the turning process shown at A. Well, that's knurling. State an adjustment to the centre left that may be necessary before carrying out the process shown at A. Well, you, you have to knurl at a slow speed. So you might have to reduce the speed of the lathe. Uh, name the turning process shown at B. That's taper turning. The slide on the door latch is made from aluminium. State two properties of aluminium that make it suitable for the slide. Well, uh, first property would be that aluminium is an attractive metal and another property might be the fact that it's, um, it doesn't rust and um, it's got good resistance to, to corrosion. Describe two health and safety issues in the picture of a metal working bench other than that being and it being untidy. Right, so let's have a look. Right, we've got a bit of metal here and folder bars uh, sitting overhanging the, the edge of the um, bench. They might fall off and hurt someone. We've got another bit of metal still in the, the vise, which could hurt someone walking by. We have um, a drill. We've still got a drill in the, 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 the drill. It's not been removed. The chuck key looks like it's still in the chuck. We have a hacksaw blade just lying on the bench. We have a, um, a file uh, where the handle has came off uh, just lying on the bench. Okay, so these are possible um, safety issues with this um, layout. The diagram below shows a metal shelving unit. So we've got bolts, spacers, brackets and the shelves themselves. The spacers are made from 12mm diameter round bar. The ends are drilled to accommodate the bolt. The tool shown below was used in this process. So just like when you have to centre punch a bit of metal uh, and drill it on a pillar drill, on the lathe you have to use a centre tool to centre the metal before you drill it. So this is a centre tool. The shells are made from sheet metal drilled using a pillar or pedestal drill. Name the device that would be used to secure or hold the shells for drilling. Uh, I imagine that would be an engineer's vice. Explain one reason why the shells are shaped and drilled before bending. Well, you wouldn't be able to drill them um, um, if they're bent 
uh, much easier to drill them when they're flat. The shells are manufactured from mild steel. The mild steel becomes work hardened when shaped. It's an to make it soft and workable. Explain what is the term work, hard work hardened. Well, basically, uh, if you're working with a metal, um, you might be filing it or uh, rubbing it down or shaping it. Um, it can become what's called work hardened, um, where the metal is, becomes really hard and brittle. So if you try to bend it, it might break. So uh, you need to anneal it. So the next question asks you, what's the process of annealing? If you heat the metal up till it's red hot <coughs> and then allow it to dry slowly, then that's what you do when you anneal mild steel uh, and you can then continue to use it. And a large view of the bracket and shelf is shown below. The bracket is also made from mild steel. Describe a suitable method of joining the brackets to the shelves other than using an adhesive or glue. Right, well you could, um, we could have riveted these. You could, you could use rivets, you could use um, screws, machine screws. It could be welded. It could be uh, brazed, which is hard soldering technique. Any of these methods would be acceptable. The spacer is made from brass, which is a metal alloy. Describe what is meant by the term alloy. Well, alloy is where you combine two metals together to produce another metal which has better overall properties. State the property of brass, which makes it suitable material for the spacer. Uh, well, brass is a, a, a hard wearing metal, um, which is probably a good idea uh, to use it for the, the um, spacer. No, wait a minute, forget that. In this particular case, brass is an attractive metal. Um, so you would use that for the spacer. State one possible finish that could be applied to the shelving unit. Well, you could um, spray paint it, you could paint it, you could uh, lacquer it, you could plastic duct coat it, um, you could blue it, you can blue steel. State re two reasons for applying a finish to the shelving unit. Well, it makes it look good and it protects it, stops it from rusting. Drawings of the shelving unit are shown below. Using the information from the drawings on page 18, complete the cutting list. So we've got the shelf, which we can see here, um, and we've got how many shelves? We need two shelves. The length is 120 mm, so its width is clearly 80 mm, and it's 2 mm thick. It's made from mild steel. The spacer um, is, well, this has got a spacer with the bolts attached at either end. So the actual spacer itself is 100, take away 10 and 10 for the two bolts, so that's 80 millimetres. The bolts are 10, but then you've got the bit in the, the threaded bit, which is also 10, so they're, and it tells you actually it's 20, so it's 20 millimetres long, um, and how many bolts would you need um, in this? You would two per spacer, there's four spacers, so you need eight bolts. Okay, thank you for listening. I hope that, um, this has helped you uh, in doing this paper.